So now that we've written the code to sign the user in, let's go through the process of adding a sign-in button. And maybe before we do that, we should ask ourselves, why are we even adding a sign-in button? After all, Game Center kind of does what we did, right? It signs the user in as soon as your application has started. So why does Google Play need to be different? And the answer is that Play Games and Game Center are slightly different animals. With Game Center, we can have a number of different applications that all use essentially the same Game Center service. And what that means is when the first game the user ever attempts to play on this device signs into Game Center, the user will see a approval dialog and maybe they'll have to go through a few setup steps. But then for every other application, when they attempt to sign the user into Game Center, that request will be approved or denied automatically. There's no additional dialogues that the user needs to see at that point. So it's generally considered okay behavior to try to sign the user in right away. Generally speaking, it's really only that one first game where the user's going to have to see any kind of dialogue. On the other hand, with Play Games, you essentially have a separate service associated with each application. And permission to access this service is on an application by application basis. That means that the user may go through an approval dialogue to say, sign into Play Games on, on one game, but then they'll still need to go through an approval dialogue for every other game that wants to use its own version of uh, Play Game services. And the user can accept or reject each of these applications as he or she sees fit. And on top of that, uh, these generally aren't in-game approval dialogues. We have to switch to an entirely different application usually Google Plus or Mobile Safari, to show that OAuth2 sign-in dialog. So it can be a jarring experience to start up that game and immediately having to switch to an OAuth screen without giving the user any kind of context as to what's going on or why they're switching to another application. And that's why we want to be careful about signing the user in to play games as soon as they start up your game. We want to avoid this experience. So how do we present the sign-in button to the player? Well, my recommendation is be assertive yet friendly, much like this puppy. Hi, buddy. And what I mean by that is, yes, you don't want to switch the user to an OAuth consent screen as soon as they start up your game. But on the other hand, neither do you want to hide the sign-in mechanism through some kind of hidden menu feature. I've seen applications that have social login features, but they're often hidden behind a menu. I've got to go into options or features and preferences, and somewhere in there is my social login. And you might think at first that maybe you want to put your Google Plus sign in there as well. However, you have to remember that this sign-in process enables a number of features that aren't purely limited to, say, sharing something on your social network. Play games can also, for instance, store your scores on leaderboards or save your game in the cloud or record achievement progress. And if a user is in a situation where they think they've submitted their score to a leaderboard, and then it turns out that that leaderboard never got their score submission in the first place because they weren't signed in, the user could be genuinely unhappy. You know, same deal if they thought they were earning a difficult-to-earn achievement, and then they don't get credit for it because they weren't signed in. Or even worse, they think they're saving their game to the cloud, and they're not because they forgot to sign in on this device. So I do recommend being a little more aggressive with your sign-in button than hiding it away in a menu somewhere. Two patterns that we've seen that have generally been fairly successful are, one, put your sign-in button somewhere fairly prominent on, say, your title screen where the user will first see it, maybe even include a little text that says, hey, sign in here to save your scores to, you know, social leaderboards or something like that. A second pattern we started seeing is games asking the user through an in-game dialog box when they first start up the game if they would like to sign into Google to enable cloud save. I suppose this method is a little more assertive than the previous method, so our puppy is slightly more assertive. Uh, but this is a pattern worth looking into particularly if your game uses cloud save. This is a case where if the user isn't signed in and they think they're saving their game to the cloud and they're not, they could be really unhappy. So in that case, it might be worth being a little more assertive about promoting sign-in. Again, stay polite, but assertive. So with that in mind, we can finally go back to adding our sign-in button to our game. Now I'm going to switch to my nib here, and I'm going to add two things. First, I'm going to add a label, and let's put it here, and we'll stretch it out a bit. We'll have it display a nice little message that, you know, say, sign in for achievements and leaderboards. 
And we'll go up here and make it right aligned. Change the number of lines to zero. And maybe we can fix the word wrapping. There we go. And then we can resize this thing a bit. So we can drag it like this. And sorry, this is kind of painful to watch, but we'll move it over. And all right. All right, I could spend the rest of this video futzing with this thing, but that's good enough. The next thing we're going to do is add our sign-in button. Now, I'm going to show you something. I'm going to use the official Google Plus sign-in button, and here's how I'm going to do it. First, I'm going to drag this button on screen, and then the next thing I'm going to do is go back into my downloads library, and I'm going to open up the Google Plus iOS SDK. And do you remember how I told you not to add this Google Plus bundle? Well, for demo purposes, um, I'm going to add it. You can follow along if you want, but we're going to delete this all in a few seconds. So up to you. But I'm going to add this Google Plus bundle. I'm not going to copy it, just add it as a reference. And then this button, I'm going to change its class from a UI button to a GPP sign-in button. This stands for Google Plus Platform Sign-in Button. And then the last thing I'm going to do is go into my intro view controller and I'm going to remove this call here to authenticate within view did load, right? We don't want that to happen automatically. We want the user to click the sign in button. And then oops, I forgot one thing. Let's go back to my uh, Xcode project, my nib and using my springs and struts. Let's change this so that these all are anchored to the bottom here. That'll make sure that when the screen gets shortened, which it will because it's within a navigation controller, uh, you know, these buttons and labels will still be seen on screen. And the last thing we're going to do is actually remove all the text from my, my button. So it looks like an empty button with no text, right? But now watch what happens when I run it. That empty button with no text magically has been turned into a Google Plus sign-in button. Isn't that cool? Not only that, but it follows all of the proper branding guidelines. It turns out that making the sign-in text slightly offset from the center like this is not easy. And what's even cooler is that if I were to view this in French or German or one of a number of other languages that we support, this text would be properly localized. There's no additional work I would need to do to, uh, to localize this thing. And now watch what happens when I click the button. After a couple of moments, you can see that Authenticate was called for me. Again, I didn't have to add any code for this to work. This Google Plus button made all the calls for me, right? It made a call to GPP sign in shared instance Authenticate um, for me. I didn't have to do any other code to hook it up, which is pretty cool. And so in case you're asking, you know, hey, Todd, if this Google Plus sign in button is so great, how come you're not actually using it? The reason is that these tutorials are generally made for game developers. And so I know that for many of you, you prefer to render your buttons inside your game engine yourself. It can be somewhat problematic, I think, to take a UI button or some class of a UI button and somehow display it on top of your game engine. You know, a lot of game engines just don't work that way. And so my point here really is just to show you that this Google Plus sign in button isn't magical, but it does do three things for you. Number one, it properly displays the sign-in button using all the proper branding. Number two, it localizes the text for you. And number three, it calls authenticate when you click it. But since I don't want you to have to rely on the Google Plus sign-in button, we're going to get rid of this official sign-in button and just do it ourselves uh, with the regular UI button so that you can see the code that would get called uh, in case you want to render this button inside your game object, which I imagine many of you will. So let's do that. First thing we're going to do is we're going to, uh, let's see, we'll delete this bundle because we're not going to use it. Goodbye. And then we're going to say that this button is in fact just a normal old UI button. The next question you might be asking then is, okay, great. So how do I display the sign in button using all the proper branding guidelines and the offset text and all that? And for me, the answer is usually, let's just display these as graphic buttons. You don't get the advantage of localizing your text, but it is a little easier. So if you go to this link that is going to magically appear on your screen right now, I have a link to a zip file that you can download that contains some of the artwork 
that you would need to display your own Google Plus sign-in button. Once you download the zip file, you'll have something that looks a little like this. We can unzip it, and we've got a folder named Artwork, and let's just drag this into our application. And yeah, let's copy it. And at this point, I'm just going to take this UI button, and I'm going to say its type is custom, and uh, let's start changing the images. So normal for when uh, you're signed in normally, or we're displaying the button normally. Change our state to highlighted, and in that case I'm going to use the uh, sign in pressed. We'll use the same one for selected. And then when you're disabled, I'm going to use sign in disabled. And so now our UI button is still a UI button, but it has a completely graphic look, and so it kind of looks the like the official sign-in button. The next thing I'm going to do is uh, let's hide a few of these things, bring up our helper editor, and I'm going to just start adding some outlets for my button and my label. So I'm going to drag this in here, and it's an outlet, and I will call it sign in button and I'm going to do another one for the label and we'll be referencing these later to hide the button or change the text of the label depending on whether the user is signed in or not and then finally I'm going to take my sign in button and I'm going to drag drag it in here and create an action we will call it sign in button was pressed. And all I actually need to do here is call GPP sign in, shared instance, authenticate. Again, this is really all that the official Google Plus sign in button does when you click on it. So we needed to add in this one action but otherwise we're going to get a button that behaves pretty similarly. So now we can run this. And I'm going to click the sign in button. And there we go. We have our bearer token here in our console log. So it looks like sign in worked. By the way, in case you're wondering why we're not seeing that OAuth dialog that we saw the first time, it's because our system is smart enough to know that if you're logging in or signing in to the same application as before with the same account as before and the application isn't asking for any new scopes and you know you haven't done anything to deauthorize the application it will assume that you're still cool with signing in and so it won't show that sign in dialog every time you want to sign in which would start to get pretty tedious we can take advantage of this situation by automatically signing the user in on subsequent visits so it kind of makes sense to have this button on screen if it's the first time the user has, has visited the application or they haven't signed in. But if the user's already signed in and we know that we can sign them in silently, well then at that point it makes sense to go ahead and do so. And we can do that by calling the try silent authentication method. And we're going to do that by going into my intro view controller. And on view did load, after I initialize GPP sign in, I'm going to call my GPP sign in shared instance try silent authentication. Now what this method does is it basically looks and sees if I've signed in in the past with this application. If I have, it'll just go ahead and try and sign me in, you know, no clicking on the sign in button required. So let's see what happens now when I run it. So we start up the application. I'm not going to click on the sign in button but it looks like I've successfully authed anyway, which is cool. Now there are clearly some cleanup tasks we need to do here. We don't want this sign in button sticking around if the user is already signed in. We probably want to hide it or maybe change it to a sign out button. We probably want to change the label once the user signed in and we'll be dealing with all of that in a future lesson. But for right now, let's take a closer look at this access token and see what magical powers this has granted us now that the user is signed in. And we'll be looking at that in the next lesson.